Welcome to our review of the seven best backpacks for digital nomads. We chose seven because there's no clear winner for like the ultimate best digital nomad backpack. It depends on your needs. It depends on what kind of a digital nomad you are. It depends how long you're traveling for. There's lots of factors. So that's why we picked the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven best options so you can find the one that suits your needs. And we're not just like making this shit up as we go. I was a traveling digital nomad for years. And even though I now have a home base, I'm still living that digital nomad lifestyle. And on top of it, I literally own and have tested every single one of these bags. That was heavy. And for each of those backpacks, we shot our own individual independent review, which you can find in the description below. Now, before we jump into the review, let's just do a quick backpack theory sesh, you and I, about what is a digital nomad backpack? Because when I was listing out the bags I wanted to feature in this review, I was a little confused myself. Because let's say tomorrow I decide to go on a three month trip to Vietnam. As a digital nomad, I'd probably bring like a big ass 40 liter backpack. Maybe like the Tortuga Outbreaker, Air Capsule, put all my stuff in there. But then I would also probably bring like a convertible day pack, something that's compressible or foldable. Think like the Nomadic Collapsible Backpack, the Wandered Veer um, Inflatable Backpack, Tortuga has a nice little compressible backpack. But that's not what this review is gonna cover. Those are really just compressible day packs. And they're not specific to digital nomads. They just pack up really light and you can use them when you're actually in your destination on a day-to-day -day basis. This is more about everyday carry, one bag travel, and big ass backpacks for digital nomads. Okay, we're gonna start from the smallest backpack to the largest. The first on the list is the Minol Daily Bag 3.0. This is a 21 liter backpack, which means it's ideal for everyday carry. So if you're a digital nomad and you're looking for something to carry around on a day-to-day -day basis, from the coffee shop to the co-working space, co-working space back home. If that's the kind of digital nomad backpack you're looking for, one of the best options on the market. At 21 liters, you can definitely do some traveling with this, but it's gonna be super light travel. This is a backpack that's very minimalist on the outside, but with a lot of organization on the inside. Got a quick access pocket on the top and a 270 degree zipper opening that gets you into the main compartment. Main compartment, pretty basic. Water bottle holder, couple of compartments here. Decent amount of expandability, right? So if you're just walking around in the day, you don't have a lot of stuff, it sort of folds into itself. But if you pack it out, it can carry probably more than you think. But here's what you Digi Nomads are gonna love, is your portable office via the tech compartment. We've got a super safe and secure laptop slash tablet compartment over yonder. The system is really unique and also quite adjustable. From the Velcro, and you can adjust here as well. This compartment can fit up to a 16 inch laptop or up to an 11 inch tablet. But the fun don't stop there. You also have like your own portable digital nomad office right here. Business cards, small notebook. You carry papers and or documents, that's where these go. And when you're carrying all that tech equipment, you want it to be comfortable. And these shoulder straps, they're thin, so they're not super padded, but they're very light and very malleable. And the back compartment is well ventilated. And when you're like, dude, I need to go into briefcase mode because I got an important digital nomad business meeting and I want to look professional as <laughs> You slide these dudes right here and then kaboom, briefcase mode. That's badass. Quick pros and cons with the Manal 3.0. Pro number one, incredibly well crafted and engineered. Pro number two, it's probably the best backpack to briefcase hybrid everyday carry backpack that I've ever reviewed. And pro number three, that portable office, man, it's just it's a thing of beauty. But some cons, our Manal carry came in a little on the wrinkly side. This might buff out over time, but right now it's wrinkly and that irks me. And con number two, at this price point, a little bit of a letdown, no weather resistant zippers. To learn more about the Manal 3.0 Daily Bag, take a look below in the description and you'll find a link to our full review of this backpack. Okay, next up on the list is the Evergood CPL24, which as the name would suggest, it's a 24 liter backpack. 24 liters to all you Digi Nomads out there. It's a little big for an everyday carry, but that's also badass, right? Because if you carry more gear, you need to carry more stuff, then you can do it with this bag. But also if you want it to double as a super light one bag travel bag, it can do that as well. Yeah, good point, Tab. Yeah, if you're like me and you only got like three and a half t-shirts, then you could live the rest of your life out of this pack. Don't judge me. This is a cool bag because it's kind of like a crossroads between, oh, I'm a little urban, but also I'm a little adventure -y. 
It looks great in a coffee shop while you're typing away doing, I don't know, what is it? You're in affiliate marketing, graphic design, coder, whatever it is, this, you in the coffee shop, it'll look perfect. But like, let's say you're in Peru, you're chilling in Cusco for a few weeks, and you wanna go on a hike, it's the Andes, of course you do. You can take this dude with you as well. One amazing thing about this pack is how everything is accessible sideways, AKA while the pack is still being worn. You got this front access pocket right there, couple of pockets in there, great for organizing your smaller bits of gear. If you put the zips for the main compartment on the side, you can also access that and reach this side pocket here. And also the laptop compartment is side accessible as well. We'll talk about that in un momento. Let's get in the main compartment. We got a couple of pockets on the top. One is mesh. And then over here, you've got like this elastic divider sleeve thing. Just, that's where you throw your junk, right? Really innovative side access with the laptop compartment. It's padded, it's suspended and it can fit up to a 17 inch MacBook Pro. And then on the back compartment, we got really cushiony shoulder straps. I like these, but the back panel, I'm not too crazy about. We'll chat about that in the pros and cons. Let's just transition into it. Pro number one of the Evergood CPL24. Love that side access. Pro number two, it doesn't look like these are waterproof zippers, but they are. The zips have a DWR coating, which means that they're highly weather resistant. And pro number three is that the shoulder straps are very comfortable due to this S-like curvature they got going on. But let's talk about the cons. Tab, what's con number one? Materials. Materials. Two problems with them. Problem number one is they are a f dirt and hair magnet. We had to uncat hair this bag before shooting it because it was just covered in cat hair. And you'd be like, dude, I don't have a cat. I am a cat free digital nomad. It's not just the cat hair, man, it's everything. It just gravitates to this material, kind of annoying. And point number two with that is the material is very scratchy. Putting the bag on, taking it off, it can kind of irritate the skin a little bit. And it's just something you notice and it's kind of annoying. And con number two is I wish that there was more ventilation in the back panel. If you are interested in learning more about the Evergoods CPL24, you totally should. And you can do that in the description below. Link to full review down there. Oh, and real fast, I just wanted to introduce us. My name is Aaron, the wizard behind the camera. His name is Tav. Together, we are Nomads Nation, a channel dedicated to digital nomads, travelers, and everyday carry enthusiasts around the world. So if that's your thing, you should definitely hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Back to the review. All right, next up, the next biggest backpack for digital nomads, the Nomadic Travel Pack. It's 20 liters. You're like, wait, Aaron, that doesn't make sense. 21, 24, 20. Because the 20 can expand to the 30. And if you think about it, that's pretty nifty for a digital nomad. Because in 20 liter mode, you got your EDC, everyday carry, nice, tight, small, good for what you need for the day. But then you got that two week trip to Belgium, right? You got that conference you're going to. Expand, pack more. One bag travel, good to go. Nomadic is known for their businessy type looking backpacks. Another great check for the whole digital nomad experience, right? And lots of organization. We got a pocket here with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven pockets within that pocket. And the pockets don't stop there, baby. Pocket on top, 270 degree access to the main compartment, waist straps included. Pocket, 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 pocket. And this mesh divider right here is what gives you access to the extra 10 liters when it is expanded. But when you're in 20 liter mode, you just zip this guy back up. That is so easy and joyful to do. Wow. And then back to 20 liters. And then on the back, solid tech compartment. Not the greatest materials in the world, but it gets the job done. A little bit of suspension to keep your laptop safe in case it drops and a document sleeve. It's also a comfortable wearing experience. Good shoulder straps, nice padding on the back panel, good ventilation. Let's talk about the pros and the cons. Pro number one, it's versatile. It's a 20 liter that can expand to a 30 liter, vice versa. Pro number two, nice professional look to it. And pro number three, I really like the organization of this front pocket. But Nomadic is a company that is quite polarizing. This pack, not discluded, double negative. Let's talk about the cons. Is discluded even a word? No, it's excluded, right? Excluded is what I meant. Number one, the tarpaulin materials, while they're great for water resistance, they get scratched very easily. Con number two is they advertise this bag can switch between backpack mode and briefcase mode, but in my opinion, it does not work very well. I'm not even gonna show you. You just gotta watch the whole review to see what I mean. And con number three, this thing is heavy. 
It's 4.16 pounds, AKA, what's the conversion? 1.886944 kg to be specific, and that is not light. We did an epic review of the Nomadic Travel Pack. And if you think this could be the digital Nomad backpack for you, you should watch that review. Find it below in the description. Next. Next up is the Able Carry Max Backpack. It's 30 liters. And what is 30 liters good for? Well, if you carry a lot of stuff to work, you could do this as an everyday carry. But not for me, way too big. But also not big enough to like travel the world for years at a time. It's an ideal bag for light and or one bag travel. And oh my God, do I have a love affair with this bag. It uses the same materials that sailboats use for their sail cloth. That's this, highly durable, highly weather resistant. Love this front angled pocket, easy to access when you're actually wearing the bag. God, that's so nice. Cool look, a little quirky, a little outdoorsy, a little urban all mixed into one. Side water bottle access. In the main compartment, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Look at that creamy, beautiful, goldy goodness. Pretty minimalist, right? One, two pockets over here, and then just a single pocket on the side. Super ideal for one bag travel. The clamshell style opening means you can access all your stuff. And it's just a perfect amount of space for a weekend trip. Very comfortable. The materials on the shoulder straps are a little rugged for my taste, but I do like the ventilated back compartment. Laptop compartment is three quarters access, which can be a little tight. That can be a little annoying sometimes. It can fit up to a 17 inch laptop. And you got this cool like charger sleeve, right? You got your big bulky charger. Pop that guy right there, close it, piece of cake. Good to go. A little more organization on the top, pros and cons. Pro number one, I cannot express enough with words in the English language how much I love these interior materials. Not just that goldy creaminess of it, but also it's ripstop nylon, which means it's highly, highly durable. Pro number two, the laptop compartment is very well thought out. And pro number three is that I do love this water bottle holder because it can actually double up as just a regular pocket if you don't want to put a water bottle in there. But I have cons as well. Con number one, X-Pack material can be a little crunchy. Con number two is the materials on the shoulder straps can be a little scratchy, a little coarse. And con number three is the sternum strap is supposed to be stowable, but it's kind of not. You're just okay. If you're thinking about taking your digital nomad travels to the max with the Able Carry Max, that's not funny. <laughs> then check out the review below. Next up is the Air TP2, Air Travel Pack 2, a backpack that is pretty iconic in the digital nomad community. Why? Well, look at it. It's got like that, I'm like an urban, businessy, cool, sleek, hip, digital nomad look to it. And at 33 liters, the size is perfect for like that digital nomad one bag travel. It should be noted there is also a 28 liter, but I haven't personally reviewed it. So we're just talking about the 33 in this roundup. And 33 liters for me personally is the cutoff point. Like if you want to use the max as an everyday carry, you can. I think but I think you can do it. But but the line is here. We've crossed it. This is not a bag I would want to carry as an everyday carry. We've got Air's signature Cordura 1680 ballistic nylon. Very smooth to the touch, but incredibly durable. And it's got a sick look. And then we got a lot of compartments. It's got a front compartment here, a little sticky with that YKK zip. Really nice aesthetic, just kind of cuts through the middle of the bag. We've got like an organization pocket right here. You know, I got one, two, three, four, five, six pockets here, seven, eight pockets. The main compartment can pack quite a lot. You've got a non-ventilated shoe compartment at the bottom, but if you don't use the shoes, just roll that f***er up. Pretty minimalist, one, two compartments there. That's it. Compression straps on the outside, we'll talk about those in a second. Laptop compartment. Accessible with PU coded YKK zips, three quarters access, pretty basic, just a laptop compartment, large enough for a 15 inch laptop. To me, Air makes the most comfortable packs in the game. They're soft though, really cushiony. I refer to it as the Air mattress experience. And that soft cushioniness is replicated on the back panel as well. Yes, you are iconic, but are you perfect? Let's talk about the pros and the cons. Pro number one, amazing comfort. Pro number two is great organization. And pro number three is it's got a pretty anonymous look while still being fashionable at the same time. But let's talk about the cons. I got a few of them. Con number one is people love these compression straps because you can really tighten it up. And some people on Reddit claim that they can use this as an everyday carry, which I guess that you can, but I, I don't really recommend it because it's such a big backpack. But also with these compression straps, can't open the bag while they're 
buckled, so you gotta unbuckle them, which means it's an extra movement to get inside the main compartment, which can be annoying. And if you just leave the compression straps unbuckled, they're non-removable, so they're just kind of flying all over the place. And Lazy Man, next con. Con number two, you just got a lot like flying around with this bag. You got the compression straps and air zips. It's just, it's, it's not the most seamless sort of like whew, travel experience. You know what I mean? Just like, whew, you get that? I hope so. And con number three is that while air really splurges on their exterior materials, on some of their packs, I think they really cut some corners when it comes to their interior materials. To learn more about the Air Travel Pack 2, link, full review, description, below. Check it. Next up, also by Air, is the Capsule Pack. We are long gone from the days of everyday carry. This is for travel. And at 35 liters, it's good for one bag and or longer term digital nomad travel. I traveled with this guy for a few weeks and I loved it. Por qué, you might ask? Well, the reason is it's just a fun travel experience. You got this really unique circular design to open the main compartment, which is inspired, as the name suggests, by Japanese capsule hotels. Again, we use the signature 1680 Cordura Ballistic Nylon, which holds up really well. The main compartment itself with the circular opening, I get it, it's not the most functional option out there. But once you're in, really clean, really minimalist, minus this nice mesh pocket on the other side. The tech compartment is uh, sealed with YKK PU coated zip. And then we got some really nice materials on the actual laptop compartment, which can fit up to a 15 inch laptop. The comfort as with all air products is exceptional. But my favorite thing is that you can go from backpack to duffel. Mm, what? And it's a really clean duffel experience. Some backpack slash duffel hybrids try to do this, but not all pull it off the way that the air capsule pack does. And for me, traveling around from airport to airport, like sometimes you just don't wanna be in backpack mode. Especially when you're like standing in line at the ticket counter, right? You just wanna to get to freaking Tokyo already, but your layover in San Francisco is like twice as long. You gotta stand, and then you walk, and then you wait, and you wanna put your bag down. You don't wanna like put it in backpack mode again. And little experiences like that are what make duffel mode so awesome. Let's chat about the pros and the cons. Pro number one, sick look. Pro number two, every exterior zipper is waterproof. And pro number three is I love when you're in duffel mode, you got this little side handle right here. It just gives you a little extra like maneuverability, another point of grab. It's just really nicely designed. Cons. I admit the circular opening of the main compartment isn't necessarily the most functional way to access a main compartment. I get it, I get it, I get it. Con number two, I was so stoked about this like digital nomad tech compartment on the top, but it's just a little too flimsy, I think. I just think that they just didn't nail the execution on this pocket. And con number three, if you are in duffel mode, the water bottle holder is in the bottom, which means you're either gonna be clanking your water bottle or roll the B-roll, the water bottle will fall out just like that are you vibing with the air capsule pack right now i get it you should watch the full review and finally last on the list is the monster the tortuga outbreaker there's a 35 liter but we have the 45 liter version and at 45 liters this guy is good for one thing hauling a ton of gear or in my case using it to travel the world for months and or years at a time this backpack and I have been to so many countries together. And typically when I'm doing longer term travel and need to bring a lot of stuff with me, I like to do a month in an Airbnb in Mexico and then two months in an Airbnb in Colombia. When I travel like that, this is usually the bag that I take with me because I can fill it the f up and then get the f out. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, I don't know what that means. Tab recommended I say it, I liked it. And this bag is great for digital nomads for two reasons. One, insane durability. X-Pack materials, super durable, a little crunchy, but durable. YKK PU coated zips. Beautiful ripstop nylon on the interior. And then just some really nice touches on materials, like this material here is so nice. The mesh is nice and soft. Just really well put together. The main compartment itself is ginormous. I like the interior organization. These little side pockets here are great for like socks and underwear. Then you can throw like your towel, or maybe your tech stuff in here, but I recommend actually keeping your tech stuff in the back because the tech compartment is bloody awesome. Bluetooth mouse, Bluetooth keyboard, chunky old laptop charger. All your tech stuff goes here. 
This compartment can fit up to a nine inch tablet. And this compartment is a monster laptop compartment that can fit up to a 17 inch MacBook Pro. And yet again, really nice materials, super fuzzy. Just wanna fall asleep on it. It's just so nice. And because it's such a massive gear hauler, it's gonna be a lot of weight on your back. So Trazuka is like, dude, we got you. I mean, look at the size of this foam padding. This is one of the biggest and like girthiest back panels I've ever seen in my life. Very cushiony, very well ventilated. That's also replicated on the waist pads, which come included. And these are literally Literally like mini pillows, which is great because if you're at the airport and you got an overnight layover, you just sleep on one of these things. No joke. I'm not saying I haven't done it before. Pros and cons. Pro number one, all of your digital nomad gear and other gear is going to be very well protected in the Tortuga Outbreaker. Pro number two, insane back panel comfort. And pro number three, I just love the organization, design, and materials of this entire front pocket right here. But let's talk about the cons. Con number one, while the back panel and waist pads are super comfy and durable, the shoulder straps, I don't know, they kind of gave out on me a little bit. Tab, feel that. It feels like the fluff has to defluffified. <laughs> The fluff has defluffified. Tab quotes. Con number two, this dude is heavy. All this extra padding and stuff contributes to additional weight. It's over five pounds. It's very heavy. And con number three, freaking hate these zipper pulls. The plastic right here is very sharp and when you're trying to open this guy, it's just kind of painful. I'm not saying it's made me bleed my own blood but it's just painful. To learn more about the Tank Tanic, and it's a tank plus Titanic mashed together. Anyways, to learn more about this backpack, uh, check out the review. It's actually the first review Tav and, ever, Tav and I ever shot, right Tav? Second, but the first one we didn't publish because it was too bad. And you can find that review in the description below. Did we miss any of the best digital nomad backpacks? We'd love to hear your comments below. Or let us know if you have any questions about the backpacks that we featured on this roundup. I personally respond to every comment this channel gets. For now. And if you found this video useful, the best way to support our Nomads Nation YouTube channel, just give us a little likey like, maybe hit the subscribe button. You can also donate money to us personally. Send me an email, I'll give you my PayPal address. Uh, or just, just keep it simple and just, just give that like button a little, a little tickle, a little fondle, you know what I'm saying? And definitely check out in the description, we have all the reviews to the best digital nomad backpacks. So definitely watch those so you can find out which one of these packs is best for you. Thank you so much and we'll see you next time.